Hello, my name is Mike Ward. I'm the head of content at Script, Pink Sheet, and Invivo. And I'm here at, uh, in Copenhagen at the Bar Europe meeting 2018. And I'm joined by Mark Beard, who's the CEO of a brand new company, a company that's created this year called Utility Therapeutics. You guys are in the antibiotic space, and that is, um, it's getting a lot of attention because of, sort of the issues around antimicrobial resistance and you know, uh, there's lots and lots of incentives. Um, utility therapeutics, you've taken a sort of slightly different route to actually sort of you know, establishing an antibiotics business. So can you sort of explain you know, where you got your asset from? Or well, describe the asset in the first place. So Utility Therapeutics is very focused on bringing a, an established antibiotic that's been used in millions of patients across Europe to the US market. It's never been able to be uh, marketed over there. And there's a real opportunity to help patients with urinary tract infections, both in the hospital and the community with, with our product. Our product is called Mistilinam. Yeah. Um, and we licensed it from Leo Pharma, which uh, incidentally is one of the key sponsors here. And it's, it's great to be back in their home. Uh, and we, uh, we have a team very just focused on that particular opportunity. Um, we have achieved the incentives you talk about, the uh, qualified infectious disease product status, and we've opened an IND with the FDA, and we're very keen to, uh, to move forward into ensuring that patients can access this in the US. So this, this is under the auspices of that sort of US GAIN Act? Exactly, yeah? yes. So, so the antibiotic you, that you have, you sort of say, right, okay, it's been... Uh, it's been used for many, many years. Um, so what are the sort of the elements of it that actually make it attractive? For example, for, for, for a program that is normally reserved, what one would, I would have thought was reserved for novel compounds. Well, it's actually interesting. It's, it's reserved for compounds that can combat the issues faced by the US uh, physicians and patients, which is predominantly the resistance to current therapies. Yeah. So the FDA is very, very uh, supportive of any opportunity to help those patients and help those clinicians with new, op new options. Um, what we have with Mycilinam is uh, a first-line therapy. It will be the first-line therapy that will have entered the US market to treat urinary tract infections for many years. Yeah. Um, the industry has been very good at bringing reserve therapies to bear on patients who um, are refractory to first-line, but this is a first-line therapy for a few reasons. It's very, very safe. Um, we have 30 million patients of real-world evidence showing the, vi the pharmacovigilance is, is very, very um, uh, very appropriate to the, the class of antibiotics, which is a beta-lactam, but also uh, it's very effective. We've got thousands of patients of clinical trial data and millions of patients um, who have benefited from this across Europe and incidentally Canada as well. Uh, thirdly, it's already on guidelines for America as first-line therapy for uh, uh, acute cystitis, which is the, the community-based infection, because the, um, the, the IDSA, the Infectious Disease Society of America, uh, covers Canada as well. Right. And uh, American, US physicians, US clinicians really want this option in their, their hands. And finally, we have, uh, despite decades of use in Europe, we have very, very low resistance rates. It's 4% in Denmark, the, the biggest user of the, um, the biggest prescriber of the product. And in other countries like the UK, it's 1%. Wow. So it's a real option for a long-term option for physicians to trust as a first-line agent. Right. Is there any understanding of, you know, why there's such low resistant rates? Uh, there are, and there's been a, there's been a lot of work, as you can imagine, um, by European clinicians and European academics to, to really delve into this. The key thing is that uh, pathogens have to develop genetic mutations to create resistance. The, 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 um, the resistance, resistant mutations that occur to this antibiotic are not able to survive in the urine. So th there's too high what's called a fitness cost to, uh, to be able to, in patients, survive and thrive and, and therefore the resistance can't take hold. So the regulatory process that you have for, 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 the, for, the, for the compound uh, you know, what, what's its status at the moment? So we've opened an IND, which means we're allowed to conduct clinical trials towards an approval. Uh, we're in very deep conversation with the FDA. Uh, as you can imagine, the, 
the, the GAIN Act allows much higher level of interaction with the FDA and so they're helping us to define um, as rapid a program as possible to get this into the market. They're very keen to help us with that um, and we're finalising that now. So you're still trying to work out you know, what the, sort of the, the, the real endpoints would have to be for the, for the clinical protocol? No, the, the, interestingly there is very detailed guidance published over the last couple of years for both the hospital and community based UTI infections um, that state exactly what you need to measure and the how much you need to do in terms of a, a phase three program etc. Because we have a lot of data already bringing to bear, we're working with the FDA to understand what that means for the whole program. Right, okay. So the, the the molecule has been out licensed by Leo Pharma. Um, you have what the rights for this molecule for the North America is for you for the US specifically. Right, for the US specifically. So this is a meeting where you know people we've got investors and we've got you know pharmaceutical companies and biotech companies looking to sort of establish partnership deals. What is, what is your role at this meeting? What, what, what are you looking to achieve? Well, uh, firstly, if you think about what needs to happen with the, the program to get it into the hands of patients who are currently being treated with inappropriate prescribing, we need to be able to both fund clinical development, but also find the appropriate commercial partner to, uh, to access both the primary care and the specialty care markets because there are millions and millions of patients both in hospitals and in the community that are receiving antibiotics that not just the FDA but uh, the, the, the societies that provide guidelines are saying You're, you, you don't have the best options, you're not using the right options. So I'm here to talk to investors and companies who can allow us to uh, to fund and move forward with all of the aspects to get this ready for um, for launch in the very near future. So, so some of the finance would be used to run those clinical trials. You'd also look for finance to sort of set up a, a, a marketing commercial infrastructure. Is, is that the plan? It's or? something we're d discussing at the moment with potential partners, with potential investors. What what is our most appropriate commercial model? Um, we haven't finalised that yet. Our focus has very much been on working with the FDA. Uh, we have a number of options that we could look at, whether it is to, uh, to find a commercial partner who already has a very strong infrastructure on the ground to access the, uh, the opportunity, or whether we work with them to, to build uh, our own commercial infrastructure. But, but, but it's all open at the moment. And, and what's the relationship with Leo? Because you sort of said the molecule originally came from there, so you know, what, what role or part do they have in this or in utility therapeutics? So Leo is very much a dermatology company and the reason why we have this opportunity to uh, take a very interesting antibiotic to the US market is that Leo took a strategic decision to, uh, to release the value of their non-dermatology franchise through third parties. Um, they've done uh, other deals which are you know, publicly um, uh, stated to, uh, to exit from other non-dermatology products. We're quite specific in how they've approached this particular opportunity. Um, Leo are very much hands-off. Uh, they're very supportive in terms of access to all of the thousands of patients worth of clinical data, etc. But, um, but they see this as uh, their ability to refocus onto dermatology but still have access to a very valuable asset. And you know, so the people who sort of you know, back the company, I mean, Leo one of the backers? Leo are one of the shareholders, definitely, and they, they obviously um, funded some of the company. Uh, we also have um, actually Copenhagen-based biotech entrepreneurs who founded the company and um, brought investment into the company as well. Right, okay. Well, Mark, Thanks very much for uh, coming to talk to us and uh, good luck. Thank you very much, Mike. Cheers.